All right, guys. So first message is you should be aware that uh, there is a review for the exam posted on my open math. And uh, this is of course uh, 40 points of your grade, 40% of it. And it will not be well, like my exams uh, to be done in eternity. Two hours for that exam, an hour and a half, uh, you should be prepared to answer those questions without uh, making mistakes. Good. I will try to help you with that. Uh, from the previous semester, I have, uh, I think, four uh, reviews that I conducted outside of class. So then let's go to the lesson, guys. We talk about uh, logarithmic differentiation and let's see if you could help me remember First of all, how do I take? So question one is uh, how do I find the derivative of ln x from information about the derivative of e to the x? So give me a few steps to figure what it is, guys. Yes, very good. So what is the idea for this question, guys? How do I find the, the derivative uh, uh, if I know the derivative of e to the x? Well, I can set y equal to ln x. And then I apply e to both sides of the equation. So this is e to the y equal to e to the ln x, which is equal to x. And then the derivative of e to the y with respect to x is e to the y times y prime. And that would be the derivative of x, which is equal to one. Whence y prime is equal to one over e to the y and e to the y is none other than x so the result is one over x agreed everybody understands how quickly you can do this yes guys so this is by implicit differentiation and yet the implicit differentiation assumes when you calculate it that you can carry out the differentiation process. But how do I know that I can't? Well, guys, again, I would like to remind you uh, what's the idea here. Q 
here is y equal ln x. Yes? This is y equal ln x. Now, is this function differentiable? This is just asking, is the curve a, a, a chain built up of microscopic, microscopic line segments, right? So this curve is built out of line segments. And when you are asking for the derivative, you are asking for the slope at that particular line segment. And do you understand guys that slope is a matter of perspective, correct? So what happens here is that uh, this looks like y uh, equal to ln x from the perspective of looking up from the x-axis. But if I decide to look to the right from the y-axis, from that perspective, this curve is x equal to e to the y. And so when you measure uh, the slope at this location, when you measure the slope at this location, you right away know uh, what is the slope uh, at the location x, right? So if this is the location y, you right away can translate uh, the slope to location x because what are we seeing here, guys? We're seeing that from the point of view of a person standing on the y-axis, the slope is just x. Right? From this point of view, he looks at this point, the slope will be just x, which means that uh, from the point of view of the blue arrow, the slope is 1 over x. Why? Because uh, vertical, the notion of vertical and horizontal has been reversed. But all in all, we were looking at the same curve. Do you understand? I mean, when I rotate this pencil, presumably, guys, you advance beyond this uh, moment where you where, where uh, you don't have permanence of an object, right? So usually you take a child and uh, the child closes his eyes and everything disappears. Or an object is flipped upside down or, or changed in position and it's no longer the same object. So the idea of permanence of an object means that looking at the curve from a different point of view is not really changing anything about the curve, only your perspective of the curve. And from that perspective, there is no difference between ln and exponential function. If one is differentiable, so is another. Because if one is built of line segments, then looking at it from a different point of view will not make it not built of line segments. Clear? Now, uh, another thing I would like you to help me, please, is uh, with this calculation. Calculation number two, guys. Would you please tell me, and of course, uh, tell me what to do, to derive it is uh, what is the derivative of a to the power of x? Guys, if you want to be part of attendance, you might turn the camera on right now as I will uh, take attendance. Okay, up to you. Good, wonderful. It's okay, Moshe.
All right, Jamil, good. Guys, what's the idea? Uh, what, tell me please, what would you have preferred to differentiate? So this is a to the power of x, you would have preferred to deal with You would have preferred to deal with e to the x, amazing. So what we do here is uh, we can write this as e to the power of ln of ax, by which uh, we can then move the x down, so it's e x ln a and we can take the derivative of that expression and get e x ln a times ln a and that part can be written as e ln a x times ln a which is a to the x ln a. Agreed? So the derivative is um, a to the x ln a. By wishful thinking, I just modified a to e. So I can always uh, think of any exponential as relating back to, uh, to e to the x. Mm -hmm. I am going to remember my Russian roots very soon. I'll just watch a documentary about Ivan the Terrible, remind myself what has he done. Stream. The derivative of log base a of x please guys calculate it and of course um, come up with a way to show me in in your notes not only what's the solution which you can easily look online but what's your strategy just a few lines that tell me what's your strategy
and uh, strategy. Very good. Okay. No, I understood. All right, guys, so not only the solution that matters, but uh, how do you think? That's what we try to develop, right? How do you think? So one way to solve this question, we can just as well say y equal log base ax, which translates to a to the y equal to x. And the derivative is simply a to the y ln a times y prime is equal to one, agreed? And so y prime is equal to one over a to the y ln a. And we know that a to the y is x, do you see this guys? So this is simply one over x ln a. Understood? If you have questions, guys, of course, let me know. So if I can explain something or make something easier, that would be nice. Now, another way to think about it is as follows. So I uh, can think of it in terms of wishful thinking. So I have log base ax and I would have preferred to deal with which logarithm? I would have preferred to deal with a logarithm base e, the natural logarithm. So I would have preferred to write it as ln x. I know the derivative of ln x and that will be one, right? So what is the relationship? How can I write uh, one logarithm in terms of another? So here is what I observe, guys. I observe that if I take a to the power of log base a of x, then I'll just get x. Do you agree? And what is x? x is, uh, in terms of the logarithm, it's e. I want everything to be base e. It's e ln x. But this is not yet in base e, so what do I do? I take a, you see this a, guys, and I replace a by e ln a. log base a x and that's equal to e ln x. Are you so far with me? So uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, e ln a times log base a x is equal to e ln x which implies it because they have the same basis it implies that the powers are the same, they're equal. The powers are equal, which means what? Which means uh, that I have the formula that log base ax is none other than ln x divided by ln a. In other words, guys, to compute any logarithm, I can accomplish that by just knowing one, by just knowing, let's say, the natural logarithm. And I will say a few words about, it's fine. If you did it the second way, even, even all, all the, 
Oh, all good. Both ways are good. And the point is, of course, that you are trying to get acquainted or familiar with the neighborhood. It's just a tour of Rome, just a tour of the neighborhood. Good. So what it means, guys, is there, that I can calculate any logarithm. In fact, uh, I have a sense of the existence of any logarithm. I can define any other logarithm in terms of the natural logarithm. And I will speak about it a bit more in a moment. I just want to remind you that, that the natural logarithm, just as the natural exponential function, it has a special stance. It's uh, somehow more important than everything else because it also can be used to build up everything else. So this we have covered uh, to some extent, guys, and then we began speaking about, uh, about this idea. Okay, so suppose, guys, that I ask you to take the derivative of this function. So the function is f of x equal to x to the power of 5 sine x cubed uh, times maybe root of x plus 1 divided by the cube root of x cubed plus 27 and maybe times for good measure times uh, x minus one to the power of seven, okay? I asked you to take the derivative of this function. Imagine this were on the exam and of course, many of you would just go through the process of taking product rule and quotient rule and the powers, but it's very ugly, do you agree? It's very, very unpleasant because I mean, quotient rule alone is already not that nice and you have within quotient rule other operations. So what you can do guys is the following, the following idea and tell me I will begin doing it guys and once I take that step, you will try to explain to me, please, what's the reasoning, what's my motivation for doing it? Right, when you analyze something, what's the motivation of doing something? So uh, I, I'm going to say that this expression is equal to y and then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take the logarithm of y. Would anybody dare to write or speak and explain to me why did I say logarithm of y? Why would I think that? Well, I think it's because you can turn the fraction into subtraction. That's very good. Jeffrey, you said it. I can turn fraction into subtraction. I can, turn, I can move powers down and multiplication into addition. So I can convert it into the nicest possible operations. Derivatives of additions and subtractions are not bad, right? That's the idea. Do you see it? Okay, Avram, take care, uh, come back though. So far good. So I take the logarithm and guys, you would allow me to not copy this nonsense. So this is uh, the logarithm of what you see here. I don't want to write it again. And I'm hoping that it's not too much to, uh, for, for you to see all the steps simultaneously. Do you see that it would be numerator minus whatever is on the denominator. So what will I be getting? I will be getting uh, 5 ln x plus 3 ln sin x plus 1 half ln of x plus 1. I took care of the numerator. Has anyone been confused by me skipping the steps and writing it out? Right, you let me know if you have and where. You understood guys, it's, it's logarithm of the numerator the, uh, minus logarithm of the denominator. And then I just quickly process the, no, the numerator. There were a bunch of products, I made them into sums. There were a bunch of powers, which I dropped down. And I just did it very fast, that's all. Good, and then subtract. Uh, the subtraction will be distributed, subtract one third ln 
x cubed plus 27 uh, subtract 7 ln x minus 1. I converted a lot of uh, multiplications and divisions into additions and subtractions. Everything clear? Very good. And then I can take the derivative, guys. What do I get if I take the derivative implicitly of the left? I will get 1 over y, y prime. And on the right, I will get 5 over x. Derivative of 5 ln x is 5 over x plus. This is chain rule, guys. What do I get here? Plus, this becomes now 3. Take a derivative of ln. Whatever is inside is written down. Derivative of sine is cosine. Am I right, Grant? Plus 1 half, 1 over x plus 1 minus minus what look at it uh, when i take the derivative here there would be one third and there would be three x squared right so it would be x squared x cubed plus 27 the one third cancel the three are you clear guys what's happening just chain rule of each step and then finally minus 7, 1 over x minus 1. Yes? So it's this expression and all I have to do, I, I'm interested not in this expression, I'm interested in the derivative of y, right? y is the original function. So I'm just interested in this. Now, uh, all I need to do is just multiply both sides by y. So in other words, my uh, solution will be uh, the, this expression. It would be y, which is x to the 5 sine cubed x root of x plus 1 over Uh, cube root of x cubed, well, where this thing, so cube root. And um, x minus one seventh. Times in, uh, times what? Times, uh, I don't want to write the derivative. So I'll just uh, draw red around it, so times this. Right? Understood? Yes, guys, it's the, it, basically, why is that happening? Why do I multiply by, uh, by, the, by the function? You see, what, what's happening here is, is this. Look at it, guys. Suppose that I, I, we want to figure out f prime x. Right, so we can do that. We, we can instead take the derivative of ln of f of x, derivative of ln of f of x, logarithmic differentiation will be f prime x divided by f of x. So, the, the, the basically, I want just the derivative of uh, f, of, f of f, I want the derivative of f. And uh, what I get here is the derivative of f divided by the function itself. All I have to do is then multiply, look at it, all I need to do here is just multiply by the function. And they would cross out. In other words, what this is saying is that you can perform the uh, differentiation by uh, taking the logarithmic differentiation and multiplying back by the original function, clear? That would cancel out just based on this uh, process. Just if, if I want to, I can apply logarithm, then take the derivative, and then simply once I'm done with the derivative of the logarithm, multiply by the original expression, and I will get the right result.
This is again uh, the logarithmic rules. We went over them and uh, we can apply them to break uh, expressions that have a lot of multiplication and division. So now it's your turn, guys. Would you please, you see this uh, function? I would like you to take the derivative of it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I probably did. Ready? The most important thing, guys, is of course you have the idea. In other words, you know how to do that and you would you are not stuck on the concept. Practicing to do it fast, you should definitely do on your own.
let's uh, see what we're getting. Here is that expression, guys. I, of course, I apply ln y, which I hope you would remember, not just for this class. Do you understand how I recognize uh, to apply ln y? Would anybody tell me, guys, when should I take ln? If the question was not in this chapter, how would you know that you should try a logarithm? This question just appeared, it says differentiated. How do you know that you should have applied logarithm? Yes, essentially guys, look at this expression and there are a lot of exponents. There is multiplication, division, it looks like the main operations are multiplication or division of sorts. Yes, that's how you know. So applying logarithm makes the situation so much easier. So I see that ln y is uh, this expression. You understand how I obtained it. Correct? Ln y is this expression. You all see I just uh, logarithm, there will be two sums and one subtraction three quarters drops down, one half drops down, and five drops down. So this is the expression I get. Now what's the derivative of uh, three quarters ln of four? It will be three quarters one over x. The next will be, um, it will be one half to x over x squared plus one. You see I use chain rule. Derivative of logarithm is one over what's in the belly of the logarithm times the derivative of what's in the belly. So it becomes two X over X squared plus one. And the last one is uh, minus five, three over three X plus two. So when I simplify everything, I have uh, this expression and I multiply it then by Y, which is the original function. So far good. Are you ready for concepts guys? Jeffrey, why was it uh, um, 2x over x squared? Because of chain rule. Uh, so x squared plus one, I could not have applied logarithm to simplify it further. So the derivative of uh, uh, ln of x squared plus one is the x squared plus one is now on the bottom. And in the numerator, I multiply by the derivative by 2x. Yes? Very good. Now, I will try to push something that might be a little bit, uh, a bit difficult. Let's see. Let's begin with this, guys. Uh, what is x squared? Just what does the operation tell me to do? multiply x by itself, yes? Multiply x by itself, so it's x times x. That's what it means. Good. Now tell me please what is uh, e to the power of two? All right, so, uh, so John uh, decided to be brave and uh, to be the first in the cage. E times E. Yes, why not? It is E times E. What else is E squared? Which is the same thing, what else? So it's E times E, but it, it, it means actually something else. This is a consequence, um, but what is e to the uh, to the two let me tell you what it is if you don't see it guys it means what this actually means is one 
plus two plus two squared over two plus two cubed over six plus in general two to the power n divided by n factorial and onwards. Do you understand? So uh, carrying that infinite polynomial procedure will be the same as if I could figure out what this number e is about, multiplying e by e. That's very important for the following reason, guys. So uh, yeah, I can maybe understand what is x cubed. I can uh, maybe understand even what is x to the power of uh, three sevenths. I might be able to understand that. But tell me, what is x to the power of pi? What is x to the power of pi? That's a very strange expression, you agree guys? I mean, you cannot multiply a number by itself pi times, what does it mean? You can try tell me, multiply the number by itself pi times. What exactly do you want me to do with it? Good. So you can, on the other hand, uh, what is e to the power of pi? Would anybody tell me what is e to the power of pi? That is immediately not ambiguous. If you understood my infinite polynomial development of e to the x, then e to the pi is not ambiguous. Somewhat less ambiguous than, let's say, multiplying e by itself pi times. Yes, very good, right? So what this means, guys, what this means when you apply this operation is just to take one plus pi plus pi squared over two plus pi cubed over six and so on. You understand? This is what you have to do with this calculation and presumably you, will, you know how to multiply by pi. You know how to approximate pi, in which case you take an approximate and you do this process. It's an approximation of an approximation. At least uh, if you presume you can simulate multiplication by any numbers, this operation is meaningful right away. Yes, guys? In fact, uh, the exponential property, guys, what, is, what, what happens is that e to the x plus y means simply one plus uh, x plus y plus x plus y squared over two plus x plus y cubed over six and so on. It ends up being guys, ends up being the same as in parentheses one plus x plus x squared over two times one plus y plus y squared over two, which ends up being the same as to multiply the numbers e to the x times e to the y. In other words, you can, you can actually develop this function and understand that it is behaving like exponentials. It has the, and this is true not just for any integer x and y, this is true for all numbers. You see? And the inverse of this function is ln x. Ln x, uh, you can come up with formula as well. You see, I can come up with a poly formula. For instance, if you're interested to see how that might look like, if I, uh, if I take one uh, over one minus x, that would be, one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on and so forth. And that implies that um, um, minus ln of one minus x would be x plus x squared over two plus x cubed over three plus x four over four and so on and so forth. So that means that for instance, ln of one minus x would be simply minus x plus x squared over two plus x cubed over three and onwards. Again, uh, if you understand such ideas in calculus, guys, I'm not gonna explain this particular derivation, 
uh, not, at, not at least today. I will wait until we get integration and whatnot. You can come up with formulas to um, show that you can simulate those functions using just uh, simple procedures like addition and multiplication. You understand? So uh, I'm hoping guys, it's a little bit more advanced uh, for, uh, for, uh, for you. I mean, you're, but, but uh, this is maybe if some of you will go into mathematics, that might be useful. See this? So this is how I can define, look at it guys. I can define X squared also another way. I can say that X squared is the same as E to the power of ln X squared. Do you agree? Which is the same as E to ln X. We, who's, we, and the meaning of this expression is simply one plus in parentheses two ln X plus two ln X squared times one half plus one over six two ln X cubed and so on. Yes? So I can define X squared in this, you might say, of course, why would you want to do that? You know why I want to do that? Because uh, although X squared is nicer as X squared, I do not know how to use that, uh, how to multiply X by itself uh, pi times, right? I can take that, for example, I can define X to the power of pi to mean E to the power of pi ln X, and that would simply be then one plus pi ln X plus one half pi ln X squared and so on and so forth. Clear? I can make sense of uh, e to the power of pi this way. That's not the only way to make sense of it, but that's one way. Are you understanding me so far? Yes, guys, if you understand the logic, you understand that x squared makes sense. You understand how to multiply x by x, but x to the pi does not. So then I create a um, seemingly much more difficult definition of x squared. x squared is just e to the power of uh, two ln x. So I can, and those definitions will always agree. For anything that I had before, they always agree, but they extend my ideas. Yes, they extend my ideas. So I can uh, ask you this guys. Now we know uh, we, 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 have to, we, we have stated without uh, bothering about it, we said that X to the power of alpha is derivative is alpha X to the power of alpha minus one. This we only proved for alpha being uh, the natural numbers alpha uh, belonging to the natural numbers. You remember the proof guys, do you remember uh, the Nightingale and the Rose? Do you remember Oscar Wilde? No? Of course you don't remember. People have very short memories. So what are we are going to do now, guys, we are going to prove that the derivative uh, of X to the power of alpha is alpha X to the alpha minus one for all alpha. You clear? So how are we going to do that? So X to the power of alpha by definition is E alpha ln X. And so the derivative of X to the power of alpha is simply E alpha ln X times alpha over X. You see, I used chain rule. Derivative of ln is uh, one over X. You agree guys? Now, what am I going to do next? I am going to uh, put it in, in combined form. So this is E alpha ln x, I will take this alpha and place it in the front. And the one over x, I will write as e ln one over x. You understand? Now ln of one over x is ln of one minus ln x. 
which and the lambda of one is zero. So this is simply the same as alpha e alpha ln x e to the power of minus ln x. And remember, I just saw, I just told you guys that uh, it's true that you can combine the powers. So this becomes alpha e to the alpha ln x minus ln x. So far good? Are you with me guys? And so uh, we'll see by the last stage if you are with me. So this is alpha e to the alpha minus one. I just factor out the LNX, which is equal to what, please? Complete the sentence if you understand. So e to the alpha minus one LNX is uh, by my definition can be represented as what? In term, what? Remember what we are proving. We're proving derivative of X to the alpha. Derivative of X to the alpha is alpha X to the alpha minus one. So this expression with the E means what is the function? Nicole, uh, I hope you feel better, but don't go hoeing, please. Take care, Nicole. Yes, let's see. Moshe, Moshe, Moshe. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So the answer is alpha x to the power of alpha minus one. Hmm. Well, it's interesting if we know why I said motion, motion, motion. Hmm. Okay, good guys. It's alpha x to the alpha minus one by definition. So we just proved uh, for any number, for any number whatsoever, we figured it out. Isn't it amazing? Beautiful, right? Now let's go and yeah, everything is good, professor. Uh, everything is good, don't worry. So here is my question. Everything is good for now. We'll see what, what happens in the future. So uh, here is my question, guys. It's your task now to take and tell me what's the derivative of x to the power of x. I want you to figure it out even though Perhaps you have not seen it before.
All right. Right, guys. So, how what what, what strategy would you advise? Advise me a strategy, please. Yes. Now you see why we might want to use ln, guys. So, one strategy is we can say y equal to x to the power of x the logarithm can bring it bring the x down do you agree logarithm can bring the x down so i will say okay well let me have it uh, ln y will be ln of x to the x which would be x ln x it's not the most pleasant derivative it's product rule but i can deal with it yes x times ln x i can deal with so then what do I have guys? I take the derivative of the left side and I get one over y, y prime. And on the right side, it will be ln x plus x times one over x or altogether ln x plus one. And so that means that y prime is equal to y times ln x plus one which is simply x to the power of x ln x plus one. I think uh, John suggested another strategy. Yes. So um, you can also notice the following guys. You can say that x to the power of x is the same as x ln of x to the x, which means we are taking the derivative of e x ln x. You agree? And so what is the derivative? The derivative of this expression is going to be e x ln x times the derivative of ln of derivative of x ln x, which is e x ln x. Derivative is ln x plus one. And of course, e x ln x is uh, the original expression. So it's x to the x ln x plus one those strategies are one and the same yes like yourself's dream they are one and the same yes Avram All right, guys, now it's your turn. Ah, me. Okay, guys, so uh, uh, where am I in Schmott? I am, well, after, after the 10 um, plagues, somewhere after, but not very far beyond. So uh, here, uh, look at this expression. Please solve A. As quickly as you can, guys, solve A.
So guys, you should solve A, B, and C as quickly as you can. Okay, good. Good. All right, we are done with A, it seems, or at least some of you are, guys. So when I have to deal with absolute value, guys, and this is going to be important, we're going to enter integration soon in a few lectures, I hope. Uh, so here is the situation. So y is ln x if x is positive and it's ln of minus x if x is negative. Do you agree? I need if x is negative, minus x is positive. So then I can take the derivative when x is positive and I get one over x. And I can take the derivative when x is negative, it's the derivative of ln of minus x, minus one over minus x, it's one over x. Good? So the answer is no matter whether x is positive or negative, it's one over x, which means guys, look at it. Uh, the derivative of ln of absolute value x is globally one over x. So the ln of absolute value of x is defined for negative x and positive x. And its derivative is the global function one over x. You see, this is, this is what I'm saying. Uh, this curve, guys, is one over x. And that's the result of taking the derivative of ln absolute value of x. Whereas uh, if I just take the derivative of ln x, you will see only this part of the curve. Clear? So derivative of ln absolute value of x give us, gives us the full one over x curve from both directions. As nice as this is, now please tell me what's the derivative of B. Quickly calculate B, guys. Okay, good. Correct, Safa, you can also simplify it to be cotangent, but that's correct. Okay, good, Abraham, wonderful. All right, guys, let's do it quickly together. All 
Okay, let's do it together, guys. Uh, uh, so for uh, B, it's a line of sine x. Derivative is simply one over sine times derivative of sine, it's cotangent. Now, very quickly, guys, uh, number C should take you instant. Instantly, you should answer me number C. So you should be already writing the answer. Derivative for number C, please. I should have 20 answers. Okay, Alessandra, good. Wonderful, John. Wonderful, motion. So the answer to C, guys. Jamal, good. The answer to C is simply take the X and put it in front. Like logarithm of uh, an exponent, you can just bring the exponent in front of the logarithm. Take the derivative, look at it, log base three of E is just a number. So the derivative just takes care of the X. X disappears and you get log base three of E. Good. Now, the derivative of D is, um, I mean, you can, you, you can do product rule, yes, guys? The derivative of D is obvious. Am I right, is it obvious? What's the derivative of D quickly? Yes. Safa just, I mean, it's not, uh, it, it, you, might, you might have misread it. It's sine x multiplied by ln. It's not sine that has eaten ln. All right, so yes, it's more or less, uh, uh, people are getting it fast enough, that's fine. So uh, for D, I mean, I decided to write it as sine x times in parentheses ln of five plus ln x, right? And then the derivative of sine is cosine. And this I just uh, combine, recombine back to ln of five x and then plus sine and the derivative of this thing is one over, one over x. So please now tell me what's the, what's the solution for E? What's the solution here?
All right, so the answer to E is uh, I can apply the addition of logarithms. You agree, guys? I can apply in E the addition of logarithms. That becomes log base five of X plus X log uh, five E, right? And then I can take the derivative here. It's one over X ln five plus here log base five of E. And of course, uh, you can all uh, solve the derivative for uh, f. That's quick. All right, yes, fine. So you can see the solution to E right over here, guys, to F, sorry, just apply the logarithm and then take the derivative. So it would be five times two, two X plus one, minus one half X squared plus one on the bottom and two X on the top, it's chain rule. So this is what we get. Now, uh, guys, could you, could you help me find those derivatives? Y is equal to, x to the power of a, the derivative is obvious, yes? What's the derivative for a, and then for b, and then for c, we already did this. Yes, the derivative for a is very quickly. Yes, very good. So a, everybody understands. Derivative for a is simply a x to the power of a minus one. What's the derivative for a to the power of x, please? It would be a x ln a. What's the derivative of x to the x? That would be x to the power of x. I believe um, ln x plus one, correct? We did it already before. Yes. Now uh, your task is to solve the next line, guys. D, what is D? Um, suffer small mistake. So we're solving D guys. Let's look at D. So I apply logarithm of y that becomes sine x ln x. And so the derivative y prime is y times in parentheses derivative of sine is cosine, don't bother the ln x, plus sine over derivative of ln x, which is x. So it's this expression. So the answer is x to the sine x, and here is what we have in parentheses. Now please uh, solve question number 
e what is uh, e to the power of x to the power of x what's the derivative Okay, so for E, guys. Okay, I'm gonna wait if you're still working. All right, so what's the derivative, guys? We know the derivative of x to the x. Do you see that it's right over here? So the answer should be very easily e to the x to the power of x, parentheses, x to the power of x times uh, um, ln x plus one. That's it. Good. You understood how I did it? I just, uh, the derivative of e to, e to the x is, uh, or e to something is e to that something. And then the derivative of that something is uh, what was calculated in C. Now do number F.
All right. All right, so the number for F is very quick, guys. What the derivative for F is, uh, first I take a logarithm of that expression, right? It's, uh, I can take logarithm again. So uh, that means that logarithm of Y is cosine X, logarithm of logarithm. The derivative of the left side is one over Y times Y prime. On the right, it's product rule. So it's the derivative of cosine is minus sine, don't touch anything. And then plus cosine, the derivative of logarithm of logarithm. That would be one over ln x times one over x. Good. And so the, the end result is that the answer is ln of x to the power of cosine x, parenthesis cosine x over x ln x minus sine x ln ln x. Good. Uh, just uh, um, be careful not to make the mistake. Are you holding still, guys? A little more, or that's it for you? You cannot handle more. Reply very fast. I want to see reaction. I mean, jump to the keyboard. Like, yes, I can handle more. Right? No, I cannot handle more, but I don't have time. Come on, one minute. Fast response. All right. The response is very slow. I suppose you're not lying, right? You, uh, you are not able to handle anymore. All right, guys. We will begin on Thursday to talk about derivatives of inverse functions. Try to read ahead of time because Time is short. We don't have too much of it left. Goodbye. If you want to, to, have, uh, to stay and ask questions or um, watch something, just let me know. Otherwise, take care. Sure. We can look at that.